So in this video I just want to cover a couple quick things that will make labeling your cities a little bit easier and also uh, symbolizing in the three sizes as specified in the directions. Um, so you'll notice that St. Paul is its own file and that just makes things a little bit easier. I can give it a unique symbol and a unique label without having to do a lot of fussing. But what I want to do is make the rest of the cities in three separate sizes. So I'm going to go in here, right click and go to uh, Symbology. And I'm going to change this from single symbol to graduated symbols. Um, if you took 101 with us, you'll remember we did this. Um, we did proportional symbols for the noise lab, but with graduated symbols, you have very specific control over how many sizes and uh, how big they are, where the breaks are, and so forth. So I want three separate sizes for my cities. So I'm going to change the, actually, let me first change this to population 2007. I'm going to symbolize based on population, so I'll change it to that, and then I want to change it to three specific classes. And then at the bottom I'm going to edit the classes. So if you remember in the directions it says to do breaks at 50,000 and 100,000. So in this first box I'm going to put my upper value at 50,000. And then I'm going to put my second box, my second break, at 100,000. And then the top one you just leave alone because that's just everybody else, which in this case is essentially Minneapolis. Uh, now you'll notice the symbols are kind of overlapping a little bit, and that's a little bit of a mess, so we don't want to do that. So I'm going to play with this template and crank that down a little bit until I get a reasonable size that shows me three distinct sizes, but without everybody overlapping. So now I can see Minneapolis separate from St. Paul. I've got medium cities and I've got small cities, and I might go in here and bump up the medium size just a teensy little bit. That might be a little too big. We're going to have a little problem here around St. Cloud, um, but that's generally okay because you've got room to label everything. The big place we want to worry about is the Twin Cities where everything gets super crowded. All right, so seven points seems to be the sweet spot at this particular scale. So I've got my three sizes, and then I'm going to click my template and decide what I want them all to look like. And I'm just going to do plain black circles. And once they're all black, they look a little bit intense. So I'm going to back that off to maybe about 70%. That makes them still pretty visible. They've actually got a tiny black outline around them, um, which will make them a little bit easier to tell apart. So I'm going to call myself pretty happy with that. The other thing that you want to do in order to uh, prepare for labeling is St. Paul is part of this file, but we've already got St. Paul by itself. So I'm going to take that out, um, but without doing a whole lot of uh, extra fuss. So not, I'm, I'm not going to do selecting and exporting whatever. I'm just going to use a definition query, and I'm going to say, don't do St. Paul. So I already did it in here, I got ahead of myself, but basically you're just going to say name is not equal to St. Paul, and that means display everybody except for that. The definition query is sort of like an attribute query, except that you're not selecting and exporting records, you're just saying here's what I want you to display. And I say okay, and if I turn off this St. Paul, you can see there's actually no St. Paul dot underneath that. So that's the, the getting the symbols all prepped, and then the next piece is when you come into labeling. So if I go into Labeling Properties, and I want to set up classes, I have the option to create a label class, which your, your directions in the book will walk you through creating these manually. But since we've symbolized these in three sizes, we can use that symbology to create label breaks at the same point. So this is a nice little shortcut that's not actually in your directions. but. If I say create from symbology, you'll see it brings in my three symbol sizes, my three break values, and I can say, yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly how I want to set up my labels. So here we go. So now I have multiple label classes. I can go ahead and get rid of this default class, and just remove it, and now I will have three label classes that I can then set up properties for each one according to the relative hierarchy that I want to establish. So just a quick little reminder on graduated symbols and then how to use that to our advantage when we're labeling.